All right, Floyd, what is up, brother? Good what to see up? you again. What up? Always. <laughs> Spring box? Spring box. So, okay, let's go there real quick. So when I was in Cape Town, South Africa, about five or six weeks ago, mm-hmm. I was introduced to rugby. I've heard of it. Yeah. I didn't really know what it you know, was. I'd seen some pictures. Didn't make sense. But I was fully immersed into the Rugby World Cup, and now I'm a Springboks fan. And <laughs> this coming Saturday is the Rugby World Cup, and the Springboks are playing the New Zealand All Blacks. You know what? Let's go spring box. <laughs> you don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> but you're going to have a lot to say about our topic today because we're talking about creating authentic community. And um, so what we want to do is for those listening, we want them to just, just share your comments, share yeah. your thoughts, your opinions on this because yeah. hopefully this resonates with everybody who's listening in some way. And we'd love to hear what, what folks are saying. Share it on there, whatever wherever you're listening, right? Share it. On there, yes, sure whatever platform, there. right? Whatever platform yeah. you're listening to. So let me read this. This is going to sound a little formal, but it's going to tee things up. I'm literally going to read an excerpt from uh, a, a report generated on May 3rd, 2023. So this is this, this is, is fresh. recent. This is fresh. This isn't 1972. Okay, this okay. Will do. From the the Surgeon General advisory raises the alarm about the devastating impact of the epidemic of loneliness and isolation in the United States. So here's what a little bit of what they say. It says, uh, and this will be about 60 seconds worth of reading. Today, the United States Surgeon General, uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy, it sounds like, uh, released a uh, advisory calling attention to the public health crisis of loneliness, isolation, and lack of connection in our country. And then it goes on to say down further, our epidemic of loneliness and isolation has been an underappreciated public health crisis. Mm that has harmed individual and societal health. Our relationships are a source of healing and well-being, hiding in plain sight, one that can help us live healthier, more fulfilled, and more productive lives. And then they say, given the significant health consequences of loneliness and isolation, we must prioritize building social connection the same way we have prioritized other critical public health issues, uh, such as, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And then it goes on and it says, uh, the physical health consequences, and I'll wrap it up with this, of poor or insufficient connection include increased heart disease, risk of stroke, uh, developing dementia for older adults. Additionally, lacking social connection increases risk of premature death by more than 60%. Gosh. What is up with this? We're talking about an important topic. Yeah. Well, human engagement is one, but like social connection is high. And the only when you so when you read that, mm-hmm. the only thing that comes to mind is for me, um, when I had COVID. And I know yeah. COVID was so long ago. But man, the hardest part in that was that isolation. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, I mean, this is just me speculating, right? I wonder what the adverse effects of that for some people who did not have the connection. Like I was at home. And it was hard on me to hear my kid saying, like, I want dad. I want dad crying in the hallway because he mm. can't come in the room with me. Because you're working and you're in whatever. I'm, I'm sick. Zoom or, oh, yeah. you're sick. I was sick. No, okay. COVID. I was sick. Gotcha. Yeah, this yeah. is just me being, like, just being 100% sick. Yeah. isolation. I was on my deathbed, man. <laughs> like, it was hard. <laughs> COVID for some people. Some people have COVID and they're like, well, it was like the flu. Yeah. I had COVID. No, that thing almost took me out, player. You, you'd be like, you, you're like, son, I can't. I, I'm dying in here. Man. If I make it out, we'll, we'll I reconnect. typed my final will and testament voice memo on my iPhone. Voice memo. Because I thought, like, I ain't going to make How it to the morning. binding is that? Like, I mean, I, I, mean I, I would hope <laughs> that in the event that I went to glory, that it was counting for something. But, but dude, all that to say, like, yeah. I, I feel it. Yeah, I feel it. And it's hard, though, because in a world where we were almost told, isolate, isolate, isolate. Now we're saying, nope, re-engage, re-engage, mm-hmm. re-engage. And re-engagement is hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's tough. Yeah. It's it, tough. It's almost like uh, you're coming, yeah, you're coming from a, a long trip away from the family and you got to, to, to reintegrate into yeah. that. And it's, it's, it's really tough. So we, so we, as Christians, we make claims that uh, <laughs> community can be found within the local church. And, um, mm. right. Well, we, we'll, we'll poke <laughs> at that. Right. 
Um, because yeah, maybe, maybe not. If, if, if not, why, if so, how, Yeah. but it's not just a faith thing. It's a human thing. The need for connection as we just read in this, this little excerpts from this really long report, yeah. just for a couple minutes, why don't we just talk about the human need for connection? Yeah. Like, why is that important to you? And maybe why is it important to me? And what, what good does connecting relationally and socially do for us? I mean, it builds energy. I think energy is kinetic. I mean, I don't think that that's what we were taught in school, mm. right? Energy is kinetic. And what better way to feed off each other? This, we could have totally did this from Zoom and been in our own spots. Mm, yeah. But yeah. we get this, I mean, a banter we had before hitting record button, the banter we have after, like pregame, postgame gives it so much context, right? So yeah. you don't get this on Zoom. And that's mm -hmm. what sucks because, yes, you can be at a push of a button, be connected somewhere else, but, like, man, you get so much from being in person. You get the energy that's that you feel. You get the vibe, as the people like to say. Mm -hmm. That's a word now. Like, you get the vibe that someone's setting. You get the scent, the aroma that's put out there. <laughs> like, sometimes people just you just that look. Is that old Spicer? Look, look, Floyd look that's, that, that's, that, that's that Coach Prime I've got on. You know that's what I'm saying? Got, does, he got his, does he have his own? No, but he should. He should, right? He should. He should. That's prime time, baby. Prime scent. I'd wear it. I'd buy it better than Issa Miyake. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but you get it. You get yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. Think of, like, Yelp. Yelp, beautiful app. You can review restaurants dining establishments all over yeah. the world. You click it, and something looks good, and you go to the restaurant, it has five-star reviews, but it's so much different being able to taste it mm -hmm. and be there and enjoy it. Yeah. As opposed to just looking at a picture like, oh, man, that looks good. You can't smell a picture. Mm. Instagram hasn't created, iPhone has not created that as of yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you can't, you don't get the ambiance that's being set yeah. from that. But there, you need it. It, it pushes is, you. Yeah, it is interesting. I've never thought about this before since you brought it up is, like, a lot of Zoom conversations, video conversations, which are great for information transfer and even kind of hanging out a little bit, having fun, picking on each other. But for for whatever reason, even with a lot of Zoom conversations, a lot of uh, online supposed connection, yeah, this report still exists. Yeah. So the, all of that didn't um, take it. care of this problem. It, it maybe it, it it amplified the problem, right? Yeah. So yeah. what is, what do, what do, uh, like, f what do you need to connect? Like when you say, man, I really connect with Scott or I really connect with Ashley, your wife, or like, what is it that you're talking about when you say, man, this is, this is meaningful. This is so good connection. This is, this is the church plug. Okay. All right. So small group. When mm -hmm. I first came to the Met, it was right at COVID during COVID. I think I got hired during COVID. Um, when it's popping off, just had my son, mm -hmm. hospital shut down, and his church offered me a job for a career change. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be something to sell the wife on. And we didn't have people on this side of Houston. All of my, my family is in Richmond Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. My wife's family is in Baytown, Crosby. So, like, we're on far ends of Houston like this. Yeah. And actually more like that. So now we're at this church where we don't really out, so we don't see people outside of Sundays, and we didn't have that. So one of the hardest pushes for us was like, okay, church as we knew it, we didn't have life groups. We didn't have small groups. You come to church on Sunday, you have Sunday school, you have Sunday worship, you have uh, Wednesday night Bible study. If you're serving, you had serve meetings that you had usually on mm -hmm. Thursdays and you prepped it all over again, right? Yeah. So when we got ready to plug into small group, it was a hard shift for us because it's like, man, why? Why do I need to go to someone else's house during the mm -hmm. week? Why? 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 But then we did it and you find people mm -hmm. who are sharing life with you. Yeah. We're like in the trenches with you. So for Floyd, what mm -hmm. I needed was brothers in arms, it's people who mm -hmm. just walk alongside of me, not fix me. Mm -hmm. not tell me everything you don't I don't need anybody else to tell me it's gonna be okay but at the same time I don't need nobody who's gonna complain to me all the time because I got my own problems yeah but I want someone in the trenches with me doing life with me good bad happy or sad like that's what helps sure. Floyd engage and also help me re-engage and it's been amazing for me it's been amazing for my wife it's been amazing for my kid he's a different kid and that was one thing I was scared of because on a psychological level I think it's where if uh for when it comes to little children, for infants, for matched affect. So, like, if you smile and they don't smile back, 
some studies out there say that they are more predisposed to more psychological issues as mm. far as um, sociopathic, socio, being sociopath mm. or things like that. So, man, so when I smile at my wife and she doesn't smile back, I can just say, quit being so sociopathic, would you? Yeah, just do that. Is and that let me know how that works I, for you. This I is for some, me. This I have some kind me. words to use at your funeral, <laughs> so it'll be great. But I was fearful of that, right? Yeah. But part of it was we were all wearing masks, so he didn't see it. Now, yeah. have you seen that kid walks around this place like this is? His oh, you talking church. about prime time? That that's prime time. I mean, that's prime time at a next level. That's prime time. That kid got so much <laughs> swag, and he, guess what? He got a he got a like a blank check he can write too because yeah. he's so darn cute. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the church there is you talk about the okay the church and, yeah. and your small group uh, experience and environment um, and I appreciate you saying that because I would agree entirely. Scripture does paint a pretty vivid picture of community, even yeah. in even in the birth of the New Testament church in Acts chapter two, where this just outbreaking of the kingdom and the spirit of God is poured out. Um, powerful, miraculous things are happening. People are coming to faith in Christ Amen. by the thousands. Yet it still says that they're fellowshipping daily, they're meeting one another's needs. Some people are selling things yeah. to provide for those amongst them who are lacking. So beautiful. And it's it's crazy in that God's doing the miraculous, but he still chooses to make sure that his people do their part yeah. in serving and ministering to one another and doing community. Yeah. And, and it, it just it is just isn't biblical to live out the faith alone at all. And from a communal aspect, the picture's right there, right in the beginning. It's like, sure. man, this is a together thing. And um, it's, it's a pretty amazing picture. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, do you struggle in areas of being in community with people? Authentic community. I don't mean the surface yeah. level. Yeah. Because I will preface that by saying, like, I think some people have restaurant level community. Yeah. And by restaurant level, I mean to come to the table. It's like, hey, welcome to such and such. Can I get you a drink for your How's your food yeah. going for? It? And they don't even care what you respond with. You can say, I'm having yeah. a terrible time, and they just on autopilot. So, where do you yeah. struggle? Or do you struggle? Man, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I do. Um, but I'm learning. And here's what I'm learning is that to your point is great. There's, there's <laughs> levels of community. Yeah. I think there's like socializing which is that restaurant level. It's, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Yada, yada. <clears throat> and so there's social. And for me, that doesn't give anything. That That's that's being kind. That's being human. That's, you know, creating a conversation. Well, then the next level for me is, is relationships where I feel like I can be uh, more transparent, mm. which is, hey, let me share with you a level of what's going on in my life. And um, usually that's a struggle. Yeah. And, um, but I'm going to manage what level I share with you. For sure. That's being transparent. You don't let everybody go to the. Yeah. Yeah. I don't go to the level of vulnerability, which is, I think, the next level, which says, hey, I'm going to tell you what I'm really facing right now. And I'm risking your judgment. Yeah. And I'm just going to trust God first and you that this is where the real heart connection is is right is the willingness to be vulnerable um i just read a a, a book by Brene brown which was fantastic i think it's called daring greatly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she talks about wholehearted living and she and it, she, i don't think she's coming from a a christian point of view i think it's more just psychological and research she's done she says in order to live wholeheartedly you have to live vulnerably yeah and i'm like that's bible right there Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to me, that's where the struggle is. Like, how vulnerable am I willing to go? And then, um, but realizing when I do and I'm not judged, there's there's community, there's relationship that's really life-giving for me. I mean, well, the only thing that comes to mind is like, what happens if, how do you walk back or re-engage from the trauma of someone being at level three? Mm-hmm. And maybe they wronged you. Maybe they gossip, or you sure. told them something that you were confiding between right. you, them, and God. And they went back and they told Paul, James, Jim, Tom, and everybody. Yep. And everybody know your business, yeah. so you're hurt, right? Yep. So how do you reengage back from that? Um, man, I'll just say, it matter of factly, um, pick your risk. You're going to risk hiding and not living from your heart, or you're going to risk that someone 
not stewarding a trust you've given them and and then the 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 embarrassment or a, a sense of shame that comes from that pick your pain yeah and i think if you're going to really live more fully choose the pain of vulnerability because yeah it's going to hurt at times because not everyone's going to steward that well at all right or i can just hide and never expose myself emotionally and not even live from the heart and not have great you know a sense of community pick your risk pick your pain it's going to come either way yeah i heard uh i forgot who preached i want to say it was pastor steven this was years ago. The Stephen Patterson. The Stephen Patterson. Venmo him at Stephen sure Patterson he, underscore or something or other. If you put a picture up of him, make sure you use the one of him wearing the Astros hat and not the Rangers hat, just because I'm kind of salty about the Rangers right now. <laughs> well, I'll Too just salty. put on my Diamondbacks hat and we'll oh, be all good. But boy, anyway, let's keep go. going. But Stephen preached on, um, he talked about when you love with your heart, sometimes what happens is people, they hurt you and you, you because you damage, you kind of tear that piece off. So if you can imagine a piece of paper being your heart, you kind of tear that mm-hmm. up and you fold it off or you tuck it back. And then the next person comes along, you fold it off and you tuck it back. Well, what happens over time is that you offer less of yourself out of fear of yeah. getting hurt because you've closed that section off that was hurt before. So you never become fully authentic, vulnerable, mm-hmm. um, and loved because you don't expose it. And he mm-hmm. always said, you can only be loved to the degree that you're known. Yeah. So being an authentic community requires you being that vulnerable and walking back from people who, yep. I mean, for lack of a better word, they just rub you the wrong way. Like people, ups, people, people Let's just talk people. about people right now. Let's, people are people, man. Let's throw these people under the bus. They're yeah. people. <laughs> I drive Metro, baby. Like this is it. But people are people yeah. and people be people. Right. And, and, and that's what's frustrating. And to expect us to be different. Yeah. Like, you, like I expect, I have an expectation on you and you on me that you are going to handle my level of vulnerability rightly. Yeah. Right? But at the same time, uh, we can't have an expectation that it's never going to be uh, painful. Yeah. Because then we're just setting ourselves up for frustration Gosh. all day long. Because people hurt you. Yeah. Pe- people hurt, man. and People hurt. And but that's a part of relational yeah. equity. That's a part of relationship. Yeah. Being on the ship. But there are people, let's, let's be honest... Um, that have been hurt, maybe abused uh, yeah. or neglected, and being engaging in, in really meaningful community is a struggle. Yeah, for sure. Because of the trauma. So we don't want to just say, hey, it's just a matter of choice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but there are some choices that you know can move us forward wherever wherever we start from. What is what is the church mm-hmm. offer, man? Like, what do you what do you think, like? How should we as the church be a place where authentic community is just happening all over? You Doing life with people requires mm. some sort of engagement. Like at a certain point, I think of, um, I love Food Network and I, I have all these <laughs> stories in my brain. God, I love Food Network, not just because I'm fat, but I just love it. But <laughs> um, you have like, you think of two chefs, you have Emeril Lagasse who cooks on like in front of people and he's tossing it out. And then you also have like Guy Fieri who's in the kitchen with you and cooking and probably breaking all kind of health code violations, but it's only him that's eating it. So it's fine. Right. <laughs> so you don't you like Guy to, Fieri? it's like, and I love Guy. My son calls Guy, Bird calls Guy, Uncle Guy. And I love yeah. it because that's all we watched, but that has that engagement versus uh-huh. involvement. Right. So, um, Emeril Lagasse is more of the engagement. So he's Mm. engaging with you. And I think the church's role sometimes is to initiate the engagement piece. Mm. Like you coming through the doors, we're engaging. But it takes both to engage because you also have to show up because we can't engage you if you're not here. That's a tough piece to do, right? So half of the battle is literally showing up. But then the next piece is like, let's involve you. Let's go Guy Fieri. What does it look like for me to invite you into my kitchen? What does it look like for me to come in your kitchen? We're cooking this thing together. Um, and that's beyond small group. So mm-hmm. like, um, will you have a group of community of friends outside of your small group? I think I'm in a group of community of your friends. I don't know if I'm at DEF CON one, two or three, but I know that like, well, it's one, two or three, but I don't know if I'm at that level, but I feel like I'm in community with you outside mm-hmm. of the four walls on a Sunday sure. a message. So it's mm-hmm. that engagement piece, but also involving people in stuff beyond Sunday. Yeah. Beyond beyond what I need from you. Yeah. Like I just want to be here. I don't need nothing from yeah. you. 
I just want to be. And I think that's the yeah. role of the church. What does it look like to just be? Right. Not, I don't want to hang out with you just because I need you to serve, just because I need to volunteer for this. I don't want to hang out with you because I need you to donate this to the mm -hmm. food drive. I don't want to hang out with you because that I want you to come here. No, sometimes I just want to, I just want to be. Yeah. If we're in a relationship like that with God. Why don't we do that more often? Because we always have, I think programming gets in the way, but then I'm sorry, that's what it is. Like programming does get in the way sometimes because yeah. it doesn't give space for that. Yeah. I love it when I'm hanging out with somebody or a group of people, a small group of people. I don't like hanging out with large groups of people. <laughs> Are you an introvert or extrovert? I'm 50, 50, literally every wow. personality test that indicates those things. I'm wow. almost like right down the center. If anything, I'm to the not to the right or to <laughs> choose your words wisely. Toward, yeah, I'm. I'm. To, they're. They're both. They're nothing. Not, neither is right or wrong. Right. Right. There's right. just different ways of getting energized and sure. expressing ourselves. If anything, I, I. I'm into the extrovert, but slightly, and then I go back to introvert like really quick because I get drained pretty fast being around people. Yeah. And you could throw me in a cabin for a whole week when nobody's around, and I'd be in bliss. Like, but then I have to go to a party as soon as I get out of, yeah, the, gotta turn out of the cabin. <laughs> yeah. A party with six people, not 60, <laughs> not 60. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, I did, I get drained in, but what I do love about hanging out with a small group of people is, um, there's no pretense. Mm -hmm. There's no Christianese going on. There's yeah. no, okay, let me put on my, my church face and let me talk about these kinds of things. Yeah, sure. Um, I love spiritual conversations, but I also don't like at all a surface level fabricated spiritual conversation for the sake of, well, I guess I talk to this person about spiritual things and you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, there's no authenticity there. Yeah. I just love hanging out just and, be. And, and watching the game together or sitting on the patio and just talking about whatever comes to mind. Yeah. And well, there's that's, a pressure as a pastor because as a pastor, you have that, it's not code switching, but it's almost like the expectation that society mm. places on you in a public setting to be, something like you always have to be something to someone yeah right like you always have to be on you always got oh up oh, pastor scott here go ahead and pray for the food pastor like <laughs> i'm just here to eat like everybody else right. fam. Yeah. i don't i don't can somebody yeah. else pray today i, I pray I, pre I preached sure. yesterday can somebody pray today yeah. like it's that piece too i think yeah. it's tough it's so tough hopefully if you're from myself hopefully i'm living a life a lifestyle that's god honoring so mm -hmm. i don't have to practice image management but there are times when I'm like, I just want to have nachos right now. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about, how do you explain the Trinity? Or, hey, this thing at church, why do we play that song instead of this song? Yeah. I'm like, I just want nachos, man. I just want to be. Pass the salsa and leave me alone. I just want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's l loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. I think um, we're, called to, we're called to call others. We're also called to connect. Mm -hmm. The mission at the Met is what? Inviting people into a meaningful relationship with God and each other and inviting people into that meaningful relationship is sometimes being honest and vulnerable and saying that, right? Like, no, fam, I'm, uh, no, no. I went to a birthday party and I was the only pastor in the room. And when it was time to pray for the food, they straight up said, hey, Pastor Floyd, can you pray? And I looked and I said, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, it was like, bro, mm -hmm. pick somebody else. Volunteer somebody else for the Tribune. It's fine. Like, yeah. your prayers make it there just the same yeah. as mine. But don't, you're not the only one thinking doctors. Yeah. Lawyers. Yeah. all. I mean, they're always being solicited for free advice yeah. wherever they go. Well, Stop it. In a party of 60 people, <laughs> when people ask you what you do, mm -hmm. if they don't know you, what do you really say? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what I say, especially if I'm at, like, one of my wife's work events, I'll tell people she's supporting my rap career. I have an album coming out soon. <laughs> and, and I just say it with a straight it. face. I try that, man. Yeah, I got an album coming out soon. Um, it's called Overworked and Underpaid. So here we one. are. We're talking about creating authentic community. Yeah. And and we're 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 encouraging people to begin the conversation <laughs> by fabricating a vocation. Yeah, it gets a people lie. going. I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. It gets I'm people gonna... going because guess what? When you say when you say you're a pastor, the conversation cuts short anyway. So yeah. <laughs> it's like well, when well they, so from now on, when someone asks me, "What do you do?" I'm just gonna say, "Have you watched Jason Bourne?" <laughs> And then I'm let them say, let them draw their own I conclusion say, from I, it. I can't talk about it, <laughs> and they'll leave me alone. <laughs> Work for the CIA, one of those buildings off of 290 that no one knows That's why, right. it's, That's why right. it's lit up so much. Let's wrap it up, man. Let's wrap it up with <laughs> give us give us some practical 
to do super to do's and how do we help create authentic community with those that were around. So I'm not talking to you. I talk, I talk. You, well, I'll take all the input what, you what can you, give, you? but you, you know, uh, you yeah. can look wherever you, there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I look this way. You're looking way. at Matt, Matt Harris, look at Matt Harris. Our, our amazing look at, producer. Yeah. He up, is Matt? Mr. Authenticity. Mr. Authenticity. And Mr. Community. You know, he told me something today and it, I, I don't get this often, but when I got here, he said, Floyd, I missed you. Oh, and that just made my heart go pit yeah. a patter. So I love you too, Matt. Anywho. Did he say what he missed um, about you? No, he did not. He no, was not okay. Pacific. Okay. <laughs> All right. He wasn't Pacific. No. Um, Pacific. Tangible to do's. Very Pacific. Yeah, Pacific with a P. You talking about the left coast? Yep, I All sure right. am. All right. mm -hmm. Double down, baby. Double down. Um, <laughs> tangible to do's. To do's. I would say my big takeaway, dude, show up. Yeah, that's show huge, up. Isn't it? Show Come up on. and say what you need because- if you don't say what you need, otherwise people start mm. spinning the narrative. You can start spinning. Yeah. You give the devil opportunity to speak into things that don't necessarily be. Show up and say what you need. Hey, I need this. Mm -hmm. And I know that requires a level of vulnerability. But to say and put your feelings out there and say, man, I need community. Mm -hmm. I met a guy and I'm taking him lunch this week. I met him Sunday. His name is Juan. Uh, okay. He's from South Africa. Um Go Springboks. Yeah, go Springboks. One, he was across, I met him Sunday, and he straight up told me, he's like, Floyd, you seem like a dope dude, and you got a mad sense of style. I need community. And that community, he's like, I was like, what? That came out of nowhere. I said, where you live at? He said, the Woodlands. I said, yeah, I need community if I live all the way out there, too. That's like a 45-minute drive for me. Yeah. But you know what? We're going to meet up and do lunch today. Nice. Show up. Be like one. Yep, Show up. Great. Say what you need and do it. And that's probably 90% of it right there. That's it. Show, Show up, up and say what you need. That's In, it. Yeah. No, when you say say what you need, what do you mean by that? Like say, say what you need. Say what you want. What are you wanting from this? From this from, from this, this relationship. Do from you this, want this to be yeah. more? Because I yeah. can want it to be more, but mm. if you don't want it to be more, then it's a waste of time. It's yeah. moot. And there's nothing wrong with stating or that. Like, it's let's, nothing wrong. Let's take care of it. It's not try okay. it. I I did it. My wife did it dating. Mm -hmm. When we were dating, she said, I know we're on time. I don't know where. When we were Close. dating, she said it. Yeah. She's like, Floyd, look, don't be dating me for two years to figure out you don't want to marry me. Yeah. I am wife material. I know I desire to be an amazing godly wife. Material. I'm That's a Proverbs great. 31 woman. <laughs> don't waste my time because I, I'm on. Look, don't waste my time. Yeah. Wow. Say what you need. Say what you need. Okay. Close. What's number? What's two? Show show up. Say what you need. Number three. Last need one. number three. Because um, it's all in threes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Pastor, show up. <laughs> say what you need, and don't be. Don't put unrealistic expectations on people who cannot read your mind. Mm, yeah. Kind of goes with saying what you need, but like, yeah. Yeah, I can't read your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm the man of many talents. And one of them I do mind not possess is, not is mind it. reading. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, here's what I want, man. I, I love that those thoughts. Show up, say what you need. And what was that third one? Mind reading. Mind reading. Be a mind yeah. reader. So yeah. I know. Yeah. Kinetic. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody listening to this, man, whatever the platform, share your thoughts. Like, yeah. if you're not a follower of Jesus, share your thoughts about how, what kind of community is good for you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then if you are a follower of Christ, what do you, not not trying to like say, hey, the church should do this yeah, because sure. you're part of it, but what should we as the people of God be in the church that creates authentic community? Share your thoughts. Like how do we create authentic community within the body of Christ? We'd love to hear the comments. Say it in the things. comments. Don't just text me because I'm saying this to you because some yep. people be texting me and I'd be like, why don't you put it in the comments? Yeah. I'm not going to leer it. But if you do want to text Floyd, it is 867-5309. Eight, six, and, seven, yeah. five, All right. Hey, thanks for listening to On Map On Mission. Hope this helps. I don't want some to authentic get 20 community. seconds of that as an outro. Yes. Jenny, I got you. <laughs> How was that? Is that decent? <laughs>